Australia has experienced a sharp increase in heat waves, floods, droughts and fires over the past two decades. And according to a recent U.N. report, those issues are set to worsen. Global temperatures are on track to rise by more than two degrees in the coming years. Australia is also expected to experience higher food prices and water shortages. For more now, I want to bring in Amanda McKenzie. She is the CEO and co-founder of the Climate Council, Australia's leading climate science communications organization. Amanda, welcome. So tell us how Australia has been working to prevent these climate issues from worsening. Mm. Well, Australia is one of the more, most vulnerable developed countries on climate change. As you described, heat, fire, flood, we have almost all of the very significant extreme weather events and they're playing out in Australia right now. Unfortunately, our federal government is not doing enough. We have very weak national emission reduction targets. But fortunately, at a local and state level, there is a lot happening. Uh, state governments are putting in place renewable energy zones and a range of other policies to encourage renewable energy, electric vehicles, but there's just not enough happening at a federal level. One of the things that's particularly important when talking about climate change in Australia is the deterioration of the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists have been tracking that deterioration for several years, but explain for all of our viewers why this is so important. Mm. So in the same way that we have heat waves on land, there are heat waves under the water. And the Great Barrier Reef is experiencing consistently extreme heat waves under the water. And what that means is we're seeing mass bleaching of the reef. So you see these images where the reef goes white and that that reef, the coral will die often and it cannot support sort of marine life that it has supported in the past. Reefs can recover from extreme bleaching events, but not if they happen repeatedly over and over in short succession. And that's what we've been seeing over the last decade. We've seen three mass bleaching events in the last seven years. And um, it's absolutely devastating for, uh, for the marine life and also for the communities that depend on the reef, whether for fishing or whether for tourism. So it's having a huge impact on one of the biggest um, marine life uh, beauties of the world. Amanda, I'm curious, you say that, that the reefs can, in fact, recover as long as they're given some time to do so. How long does it actually take them to recover? Well, it usually takes at least 10 to 15 years, but it depends on the scale of the bleaching and it depends on other factors like the water quality. So one of the uh, projects that's been going on in Australia is improving the water quality that's coming off farming land, for instance, so that there is not as much um, nutrients and other things that can damage the reef. But unless we tackle climate change and you're not having those consistent marine heat waves that are so damaging, we can't save the reef. So uh, our argument is always we need to tackle climate change first. We need to be getting our emissions, our pollution down here in Australia and around the world. Mm. Well, Amanda, in addition to the Great Bar Barrier Reef, Australia is also home to a wide spectrum of wildlife that's only found uh, there. Tell us a little bit more about some of the species that have been most impacted by climate change so far and how all of this mm. has a cascading effect, one that, that impacts humans ultimately. Absolutely. So many people would be familiar with Australia's beautiful animals, particularly the koala. The koala was very substantially affected by the um, bushfires that we had 2019-2020 uh, summer, which affected forests, um, about a thousand miles of forests in Australia, absolutely huge area, a billion animals uh, perished or were injured. And koalas in particular were heavily affected in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland. And it's just devastating when you see some of these beautiful animals. Koalas, as you can imagine, they're not very fast on their feet. So if there's a bushfire, they usually can't escape, particularly when it's a mega fire. Um, the, these fires were extremely hot, they were extremely fast, and they covered enormous areas. So wildlife couldn't get away. We saw kangaroos, who are fast-moving animals, on fire. Firefighters, mm. unfortunately, saw that. It was absolutely devastating. So... I think many people around the world have a, have a soft spot for Australian animals and they're being hugely affected by climate change. And, of course, um, this affects livestock and farming animals as well, um, which has an impact on uh, Australia's dairy industry, on our food prices, 
on our capacity to um, be growing and producing all of the different foods that we, we rely on too. All right. Amanda McKenzie, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.